Hello everyone, my name is Jared Beckwith. If you don't know me, I'm on a journey of self-studying artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. And in today's video, I'm sharing a clip from MIT professor Lex Friedman's YouTube channel where he posted a lecture from Andrew Ng giving a talk on applying the nuts and bolts of machine learning. Now Andrew Ng, he's a Stanford professor. He co-founded Coursera, co-founded Google Brain, super smart dude he pretty much ran the artificial intelligence lab at stanford so anything you want to know about artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning he's the guy you want to go to and now without further ado let's get into the video's question where andrew ng answers how do you build a career in machine learning make sure you guys like this video and subscribe for more and let's get into the lecture you know i found that the number one question i get asked is um, uh, how do you build a career in machine learning, right? And I think, um, you know, when I, when I did a Reddit Ask Me Anything, uh, Reddit AMA, that was one of the questions that was asked. Even today, a few people came up to me and said, you know, take a machine learning course, you know, the machine learning MOOC on Coursera or something else. Um, what advice do you have for building a career in machine learning? I have to admit, I, I don't have an amazing answer to that, but since I get asked that so often, and because I really want to think what would be the most useful content to you, I, I, I thought I'd at least attempt an answer, even though it's maybe not a great one, right? So this is the last thing I had uh, at the start, which is kind of personal advice. Um, you know, I think that um, I was asking myself this same question uh, 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 like a, a couple months ago, right? Which is, you know, after you've taken a machine learning course, um, what's the next step for um, developing your machine learning career? And at that time, I thought um, the best thing would be if you attend deep learning school. <laughs> uh, so, so, so Sammy, Peter, and I got together to do this. I hope <laughs> um, <laughs> this is really part of the motivation. Um, and, then, and then beyond that, right, what, what are the things that, that, that really help? Um, so I do have had, actually, I think all of our organizations have had quite a lot of people want to move from non-machine learning into machine learning. And when I look at the career paths, um, you know, one common thing is after taking these courses to work on a project by yourself, right? I've seen, I have a lot of respect for Kaggle. A lot of people actually participate in Kaggle and learn from the blogs there and then, and then become better and better at it. Um, but I want to share with you one other thing that I haven't really shared. Oh, by the way, almost everything I talked about today is, is, is new content that I've never presented before, right? So, so, I, so I, I don't know, so I hope it worked okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I want to share with you really the, the I want to think of it as a PhD student process, right? Which is, you know, a lot of um, uh, uh, people, you, really, when I was teaching full time at Stanford, a lot of people joined Stanford and asked me, you know, how do I become a machine learning researcher? How do I have my own ideas on how to push the bleeding edge of machine learning? And um, whether, you know, you're working in robotics or machine learning or, uh, or something else, right? There's one PhD student process that I find has been incredibly reliable. Um, and, um, and, and I'm gonna say it, and you may or may not trust it, but I've seen this work so reliably so many times that I hope you take my word for it, that this process reliably turns non-machine learning researchers into you know, I mean, very good machine learning researchers, which is, um, and there's no magic really, read a lot of papers and work on replicating results. And I think that the human brain is a remarkable device. You know, people often ask me, how do you have new ideas? And I find that um, if you read enough papers and replicate enough results, you will have new ideas on how to push forward this little yacht. Right? I, I, don't know how the, I, don't really, I don't know how the human brain works, but I've seen this be an incredibly reliable process. Read enough papers and you know, between 20 and 50 papers later, and, and it's not one or two, it's more like 20 or maybe 50, you will start to have your own ideas. And this has been, so you see Sammy's nodding his head. This is an incredibly reliable process, right? And then my other piece of advice is, um, so sometimes people ask me what work in AI is like. And I think some people have this picture that when we work on AI, you know, at Baidu or Google, or OpenAI or whatever, I think some people have this picture of us hanging out in these, um, airy, you know, well-lit rooms with natural plants in the background. And we're all standing in front of a whiteboard discussing the future of humanity, right? <laughs> and 
all of you know, working on AI is not like that. Frankly, almost all we do is dirty work, right? <laughs> so one place that I've seen people get tripped up is when they think working on AI is that future of humanity stuff and shy away from the dirty work. Um, and dirty work means anything from going on the internet and downloading data and cleaning data or downloading a piece of code and tuning parameters to see what happens, or debugging your stack trace to figure out why this silly thing you know, overflowed, or optimizing the database, or hacking a GPU kernel to make it faster, um, or reading a paper and struggling to replicate the result. Um, at the end, a lot of what we do comes down to dirty work. And yes, there are moments of inspiration, but I've seen people really stall if they refuse to get into the dirty work. So my advice to you is, um, and, and actually, another, another place I've seen people stall is if they only do dirty work. Then, then you can become great at data cleaning, but, but not also not become better and better at having your own moments of inspiration. So one of the most reliable formulas I've seen is really if you do both of these. You know, dig into the dirty work. Like if, if, you're, if, you're, if your team needs you to do some dirty work, just go and do it. But in parallel, read a lot of papers. And I think the combination of these two is the most reliable formula I've seen for producing great researchers. Right. So um, I want to close with uh, 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 just one more story about this. And I guess some of you may have heard me talk about the, 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 the Saturday story, right? But um, for those of you that want to advance your career in machine learning, um, you know, next weekend you have a choice, right? Um, next weekend, you can either stay at home and watch TV, uh, or, 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 or you could do this, right? And it turns out this is much harder, and there are no short-term rewards for doing this, right? If next weekend, I think this weekend, you guys are all doing great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but next weekend, if you spend next weekend studying, reading papers, replicating results, there are no short-term rewards. If you go to work the following Monday, your boss doesn't know what you did, your peers didn't know what you did. No one's gonna pat you on the back and say, good job, you spent all weekend studying. Um, and realistically, after working really, really hard next weekend, you're not actually that much better, you're barely any better at your job. So there's pretty much no reward for working really, really hard all of next weekend. Um, but I think the secret to, 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 to advancing your career is this. If you do this not just for one weekend, but do this for weekend after weekend for a year, you will become really good at this. In fact, almost every, well, everyone I've worked with at Stanford that, 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 that was close and became great at, at, at this, you know, everyone, actually including me when I was a grad student, we all spent late nights, you know, hunched over like a neural net, tuning hyperparameters, trying to figure out why it wasn't working. And it was that process of doing this not just one weekend, but weekend after weekend that, um, that, that that allowed all of us really to, to, to our brains neural networks to learn the patterns that 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 taught us how to do this. Um, so I hope that you know even after this weekend you keep on uh, spending the time to keep learning because I promise that if you do this for long enough you will become really really good at deep learning. Um, so just to wrap up, you know I'm super excited about AI. I've uh, been making this analogy that AI is the new electricity, right? And and what I mean is that. Just as 100 years ago, um, electricity transformed industry after industry. Right? Electricity transformed you know, agriculture, manufacturing, transportation, communications. Um, I feel like those of you that are familiar with AI are now in an amazing position to go out and transform not just one industry, but potentially a ton of industries. So um, I, I guess at, 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 at Baidu, I have a fun job trying to transform not just one industry, but multiple industries. But um, I see that uh, you know it's very rare in the history of, in, in, in human history where one person, where someone like you, can gain the skills and do the work to have such a huge impact on society. Um, I think in Silicon Valley, the phrase "change the world" is overused, right? You know, every every Stanford undergrad says, "I want to change the world." But for those of you that work in AI, I think that the path from what you do to actually having a big Im impact on a lot of people and helping a lot of people in transportation, in healthcare, in logistics, in whatever, is actually becoming clearer and clearer. So, so I hope that uh, all of you will, you know, uh, 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 keep working hard even after this weekend and and go do a bunch of cool stuff for humanity. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.